Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In this lecture, we will discuss about protein tertiary structures, right. So, we have already discussed about the protein primary structure, what is the primary structure? Amino acid sequence. Then protein secondary structures, right, what are different secondary structures? Alpha helix. Alpha helix beta strands, right. So, then we derived several features or several properties from the protein sequences as well as for the protein uh, secondary structures. In the previous class, we mainly focused on the different methods for predicting protein secondary structures. So, we discussed about the statistical analysis for example, chop Weissman method this is based on the propensity of amino acid residues at any conformation either helix or strand right or coil. Then we discussed about information theory this is called the GAR method right they used the information theory and mapped the information at the central position as well as the window length of 17 residues, left side 8 residues and right side 8 residues, right, and she uses information, right, to predict the secondary structures. Then we discussed about hydrophobicity profiles, the plot connecting the sequence and the values, right. So, either they get different patterns or you can take the average value and see the peaks to identify the secondary structures. Then we discussed about multiple sequence alignment, right, this is mainly based on the alignment of different sequences, right in the form of either the PSM matrices or any other different methods, right. So, they use this alignment for predicting the secondary structures. Either they use the GAR method or they can use the ensemble based information from known structures. The later on then we discussed about the machine learning techniques, here they used all the information, right and they train this information using machine learning techniques like neural networks or uh, subproductive machines or different methods, right and to predict the secondary structures. We also discussed about the consensus method that right, the ensemble based methods or the meta servers right either they take based on voting or train the output of the different methods right to get the desired output. So, in this class we discuss on 3D structures right. So, what do you think about the 3D structures which information we can obtain from protein 3D structures? The orientation, the orientation as well as especially the uh, you can see the coordinates. So, the tertiary structure or the 3D structures, so they provide information about the 3 dimensional structure of a protein, right, it atomic details. So, it can give you the exact location of each atom, right, in a specific residues on your protein, right, x and y z coordinates in the Cartesian coordinate system. Then, coordinate structures, they provide the combination of the secondary tertiary structures having different subunits to give the uh, tertiary structures. So, here if you see the protein, so you can see the structure of a particular uh, protein here. So, there are uh, uh, so you can some of them that is secondary structures helix you can see in the form of spirals and you can see some arrows here they represent the strands right and then they interact with each other the atoms and the residues right they interact with each other based on the various types of interactions depending upon the residue types either they make the electrostatic interactions or van der Waals interactions or hydrophobic interactions and they form the unique 3D structures. When you talk about the three dimensional structure of a protein it gives the atomic coordinates say if this is an atom here denoted here. So, it gives the information regarding x, y and z coordinates. How to get the structures right, how to obtain the information regarding the 3D structures right. So, there is various experimental methods like x-ray crystallography, NMR spectroscopy, electron microscopy right, the different methods which can help right to determine the 3D structures of proteins or other micromolecules even for so small molecules. So, if you look about the x-ray crystallography it is one of the most prominent methods available in the literature. Currently, we have the very sophisticated instruments right crystallography instruments right. So, you can obtain the three dimensional structures right of even the big small molecule big molecules if you are able to crystallize. In x-ray crystallography the principle used in x-ray crystallography is what? X-ray diffraction right if you have the x-ray diffraction right this is the basic principle used in extra crystallography. So, there are various steps to use extra crystallography to get the structures using extra crystallography. First, we need to have a pure protein, 
right. So, in that case either you can synthesize the protein right or you can extract and then get the proteins isolate the protein right. So, and if you get the protein then we have to ensure that this protein is pure. So, there are various steps which are involved in protein, the protein crystallography. First you need to get the pure protein. So, pure purification. Once we get the pure protein then we need to crystal because the X-ray crystallography diffraction is important. In order to get a diffraction we need a crystal. So, in this case we need to use different experimental conditions right. So, that you can make this protein in a crystallized form right. What is a crystal? Periodic arrangement, periodic arrangement of atoms right. So, in the uh, arrangement of atoms there is more, the same, same unit right for all these units are the same right. So, in this case you will get the crystallized of the protein and then you need to next is crystal mounting is an also important step. Currently in several uh, laboratories like the synchrotron radiation and all it is automated. So, in this case you can automatically mount at a different directions and you can get the diffraction pattern. Otherwise, this is also an important step to mount the crystals in proper orientations and different uh, proper directions. Once we do all these things then you can pass the, the x rays right and you can get the diffraction pattern. So, if you have the crystal then you will get the diffraction pattern this will give you what is the meaning of the diffraction pattern. The position of the yeah, this is the distribution of the electrons in the molecule, how these positions in the molecule. So, they are they get diffracted right and then you can see the patterns. So, getting this pattern this patterns of the electrons right this we call as electron density map. So, you can have a get of maps right depending upon the population of the electrons in the crystal right. So, you can get the electron density map this is what we get using the diffraction of these crystals. Then after that we need to process. So, electron density map right this is location of these electrons we need to process this data to get the structures. There are various methods to process this data right. So, it, because we need to have the intensity or amplitude right as well as the phase. So, there are this is the problem the x-ray crystallography now there are different methods to solve the problem of this phase issue right and then we can obtain the structures. So, then once we get this process the data we will get the structures. Then we need to refine the structures because, uh, because depending upon this quality of the structures right we need to match with this known data right known electron density map with known structures. Then they like to refine the structures and finally, you can get the refined structures. Once we get the refined structures right then this structure can be useful for doing an analysis to understand the behavior of these protein structures or the relationship between structure and function where are the active site residues which residues are involved in this type of stability right and folding and so on so, this is possible. So, we see the extra crystallography this is the major step first we need the crystal right we have to get the crystal and get the diffraction you can give a pattern like this and we process this data right then finally, you get the 3D structures this is what we need. Then we check this quality of these 3D structures right and the validating this using various methods and one of the method is the Ramachan plot and see whether this uh, the residues are in the allowed regions mainly in the secondary structures alpha helices and the uh, beta strands. So, we look into these known structures x-ray crystallography is one of the most prominent methods and you can see a quite large number of structures in the protein data bank I will show very soon and several researchers they got Nobel prize right for using x-ray crystallography to solve the structures starting from the beginning the discovery of this uh, x-rays and then using x-rays to diffract on crystals right and then for getting uh, this for the small molecules to get the structures like like the Bragg and Bragg. So, they showed that the path difference is the integral multiples of this wavelength. What is the famous equation for the Bragg's law? 2d sin theta equal to n lambda n lambda is integral multiples of this wavelength ok this is the path difference for a theta is the angle between the incidence Under. and the plane right and what is the d? The interplanar distance. interplanar distance right this interplanar distance right theta is the angle between the angle of incidence or angular refraction. So, lambda is the wavelength. So, they showed that so 2d sin theta equal to n, n lambda and you get the highest diffractions only if this integral multiples of lambda right. So, then they used this x uh, ray diffraction to solve the structures of proteins mainly for the globular proteins say myoglobin and the hemoglobin this was solved structures right. Kendrew and Perutz right they got the Nobel prize in 1962 for understanding the structures of globular proteins using x-ray crystallography. Then there are several other research like the vitamin B12 complex and then they used for the DNA structures right who got the Nobel prize in DNA structures? 
Watson. Uh, Watson Crick got the Nobel Prize and then they use protein DNA interactions like Clark got the Nobel Prize for the protein DNA interactions. Then for the case of membrane proteins right in 1988 Dyson Hofer right to Mitchell and the Huber they solved the structures of the membrane first membrane protein right the photosynthetic reaction center right and they got, got the Nobel Prize in 1988. So, currently in 2009 so, we got the uh, the Venki Ramakrishnan, Tom States and Radha Yonath, right. They are three crystallographers, right. They enormously contributed to understand the protein production machinery, right, at the atomic level using the 3D structures of ribosomes, right. So, they got the Nobel Prize in, in 2009. Also, there are Nobel Prize winners for the GPCRs, right, and the other works on this protein crystallography. So, X ray crystallography is a major technique used to determine the 3D structures of protein molecules as well as other biological macromolecules. Then we have also NMR spectroscopy and microscopy are used to determine the structures. If you look at the NMR spectroscopy, right, it is based on the quantum mechanical properties of atoms like the spin that determines information of the atoms right, and the local environment right, with response to the magnetic field. So, they have this spectrum and use the distance constraints in the NMR, spe NMR spectra and use these distance constraints to develop models. This is why if you look into the structures for the crystallography they gave one structure and the NMR they create several models right. You can see the NMR structures they have 10 models and there is average structure for among the all the different models they get the average structures. So, in 2002 Kurt Uthrich he got Nobel prize for using NMR for 3D structure in determination. So, there are several techniques and the major one is extra crystallography, NMR spectroscopy and currently electron microscopy is also used for determining the 3D structures. So, we solved all the structures and all the structures are now deposited in protein data bank right. PDB is called the protein data bank right all the structures are now deposited in protein data bank. In 1977 Burkham National Laboratory started to collect the structures of proteins at that time they are only 8 to 15 structures right. They gathered the structures and started to develop a data set so, from Burkham National Laboratories. Later on when the structures are coming up then they try to collect the more structure again and again right and they formed the consortium right they formed this research collaboratory in structural bioinformatics they formed this uh, collect the uh, protein data banks. So, the protein data bank so it is organized by the various institutions from different countries like Japan or the Europe or the US. So, they have the PDB USA and PDB Europe as well as the PDB Japan. So, they share the data from each other and they collect the information and they maintain the structures of these protein three dimensions three structures. So, now the growth of the PDB depends on the structures deposited in the protein data bank right. Earlier days they accepted all the structures when they are uh, published in the literature. So, if you see the latest ones and the previous ones latest one they have several options right and also they have to pass through several quality checks and the older structures the, they did not perform the quality check there was there was several issues in the world uh, entries. And secondly earlier days the crystallographers or the using NMR spectroscopy they solve the structures and they publish and then deposit in the data bank. The current scenario first we have to get the code from the PDB before you publish your article. In this case the PDB right who is maintaining the PDB right they curating the PDB they check the quality of your structure and if you pass the quality check then only they assign the code. So, the only after you get in the code you can publish your research article. So, in this way they are able to maintain the quality of the structures which are available in the protein data bank. This is the reason why the PDB is the widely accepted the unique resource for getting the structures 3D structures of proteins and as well as other macromolecules and complexes. So, here I show the organization of the protein data bank and the data which are available in the protein data bank and how to extract the data and how to utilize the data from the protein data bank. So, PDS, PDV is available in the RCSB website right research collaborator in structural bioinformatics. So, they maintain the website so which contains all the solved structures. So, currently it has about at the moment we have 1,33,589 structures and these structures is increasing right periodically right. 
So, every time you can see you can see increase in the growth of the number of PDB structures available in the protein data bank. So, this is the front page of the protein data bank right you can see the statistics right here and here you can see the search option. You can use any search option right to get the, uh, the desired information from protein data bank. So, we see here there are several options available to deposit or to search you can use in advanced search right and you can visualize the molecule and you can analyze the molecule or you can download right and there are several tutorials available in protein data bank which are related with the usage of protein 3D structures either there are several tools or you can several analysis or several aspects what we can do with this uh, 3D structures of proteins. So, here you can use the search option right you can if you want to have any specific uh, protein you for example, this is a code for the lysozyme. So, to elicit term this is a chain information if you give this one you will get this uh, the data for this lysozyme. If you look into this statistics of protein data bank ok. So, here you see as I discussed earlier extra crystallography is the most prominent technique to obtain the 3D structures of proteins. So, if you see among this 127,000 structures. So, you can see about 114,000 structures are obtained from X-ray crystallography. Then if you see the normal spectroscopy there is about 11,000 structures right followed by the other techniques. And if you look into these structures of the different macromolecules, we see proteins we can have the highest number of uh, structures it say 118,000 and about 3,000 nucleic acid and the complex is about 6,000. This includes both protein RNA and protein DNA complexes. So, now you can use this PDB to get various information you can get the collective information regarding the proteins from same same families or you can have you can create non dependent data sets or you can get the data with any specific resolution for example, high resolution structures or any specific organisms and so on. So, if you look into the any specific code for example, if you are interested in one protein. So, I put two LHTM in the search option right you can see the search option here right we have put the two LHTM here right and then if you click on this go right then you will get the first page with the two LHTM. So, two LHTM tells this is bacteria phage T4 lysozyme. So, it give you the abstract of that particular protein. So, here left side you can see the structure this is structure of the T4 lysozyme and you can several options you can see here to display the file or to download the files. In the down you can see the method used here you can see this extra crystallography and the subunits and different other details in the summary page. Then there are several other links for example, you can see the 3D view or the annotations sequence similarities or sequence information and the structure information experiments and so on. So, if you into the front first page you can have different options to see get the sequences and structures. If you see here this is the faster sequence and you can also use the data for the full proteins either you get the header information without coordinates or you can get the full coordinates. If you click on the faster sequence then you will get the faster sequence ok here this is the 2 LH term right this is the faster format right and here you start the amino acid sequence from here to here 164 amino acid residues right you can get the sequence in faster format. If you want to have the all the details of that particular protein just you click on the PDB format right. So, when you click on the PDB format right you can get the information you start with the title and header this is structure of this bacteria which T4 lysozyme and you get the more information regarding the source and you can see the authors right. So, Brian Matthews ok he is the one who solved the structure and you give the reference general articles ok they published in this article right earlier we discussed about the PubMed right. So, here you can see the full reference for this uh, structure right. Then you can see the remarks ok you can see the several other references and there are any specific remarks about the particular protein. So, if you go down to this page right. So, you can see the resolution how far you can get the information about the 1.7 angstrom resolution here. So, what is the meaning of resolution? The minimum resolution uh, accuracy. Yeah, minimum accuracy you can get up to this 1.7 angstrom level you can get the atom accurate position. position of this each atoms right. So, earlier days we get with the high with low resolutions for say 3 angstrom 5 angstrom. So, in this case the regular density maps are not so clear. So, the position of the coordinates are also not sure 
right. When we get more and more sophisticated instruments, now you can get very clear picture. So, even up to one angstrom resolution, you can get the quality of and the position of all the x, y, z coordinates, right, with very uh, reliably. So, after that, we go down, we scroll down the PDB structure, right. So, you can see the residue, the sequence information. So, these are the sequence information. Here, the sequence are given a 3 liter code, right. This is m, this is n, this is i, this is f, and so on. And then here, then we give the data about the secondary structures. And if you look into the different PDB structures, some of them contain the secondary structures, some of them they do not have this information. And second aspect is the end residues are not very clearly given in most of these PDB, PDB structures. So, it contains several helices, for example, isolation at position number 3 to glutamic acid position number 11. So, 3 to 11, so this can form a helix, right, from here to here right this helical segment right then you can see the strand so there are several helices here this is put the helix and you can see the strand, uh, the strand here right this is the segments right for example is 56 to 58 so this is the isolation glycine 56 to isolation 58 right this can uh, form a beta sheet here there are 13 residues in one sequence they gave so accordingly you can see the location of the secondary structures so now we go down we scroll down the pdb coordinates now, the next important thing, this is the important aspect of the 3D structures. What is the important, important information you get from the 3D structures? Coordinates, right? You need the x, y, z coordinates. Okay, this is the x, right, y and z coordinates. Again, this is atom, right, for each atoms in the proteins or the nucleic acids. So, what are normal atoms in the protein? Nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen. Sulfur. Sulfur, right. So, you can see the again C O, right, and then you can see these atoms, right, N, C alpha, C O, these are the main chain, and C beta, C gamma, C, C gamma 1, C gamma 2, this side chain for this uh, residue value. For each atoms, they give the coordinates. Here, this is the atom number. So, this atom name, this atom name, this is the atom number. So, here you can see the residue, num residue name. Now, this is the chain, chain information whether it is A chain or B chain. This is the residue number and then we have the coordinates, the exquisite coordinates and they give you the occupancy and the temperature factor, right, that I will explain very soon. So, if you have these PDB coordinates, right, they give all the information regarding each atom the atom name, atom number, residue name, residue number and the chain information as well as the coordinates x, y and z coordinates. So, they also have some water molecules or some ions or some other ligands if they are present they give as heteroatoms, heteroatoms. So, you can distinguish the atoms and the heteroatoms right whether this is belongs to protein coordinates or it is water molecules or any other ions or the ligands right they used to crystallize that co-crystallize this particular uh, protein. So, now I discussed earlier, so we have the x, y, z coordinates, right, and then you can see this is the occupancy. And I will explain what is the occupancy which are given in the protein structures. If you look into the here, this time occupancy, most of the cases it is 1, and some cases you see there is a different numbers. What is the meaning of the different numbers and why this is 1, why, right, I will now uh, just I will explain. So, what is occupancy? If you look into these macromolecular structures, macromolecular crystals. They are composed of many individual molecules to pack together in the symmetrical arrangement. So, if you look into these structures, the side chain of the surface may just work back and forth, right, between several conformations. In this case, a substrate can bind at different orientations, either a orientation x and orientation y, right, in the aqueous side, or the metal ion may be bound only few of the molecules. If in this case, when build the atomic model, they give the term occupancy to see how much each conformation is observed in the crystal, whether only one conformation is observed in the crystal for each atom or this atom can have different conformations. If the occupancy is 1, what is the meaning of that? So, that atom is found in all the molecules the same place in the crystal. So, there is no deviation. So, almost all the, all the molecules, right, this atom is present in the same position if the value is 1. In some cases, okay, this is the example for 1. So, for all this in these cases, you can see the occupancy is 1. So, the all these atoms, right, these atoms in this residue, 
right occupy the same position in all the molecules. So, this is the why the occupancy is 1. In some cases it is different say this one this is the tyrosine 146 C beta see the same beta tyrosine 146. Here you can see the value this is 0 0.49 for one case and another case it is 0 0.51. What is the difference? How it is 0 0.49 and 0 0.51? So, for example, if the metal ion binds only one half of the molecules, you can see the electron density map, right? And based on that, they assign the occupancy. If it is same orientation, right, they, then they put the 0 0.5, right, in the both cases. What is the meaning of this occupancy? This will tell you the fraction of the molecules in different conformation. For example, two different conformation right the for I showed it here. So, two different values 0 0.49 for 0 0.451. In this case this atom right the C beta of tyrosine 146 they have two different orientations for example, this is 0 0.49 0 0.51 and the total should be 1. So, there are different uh, uh, cases for example, 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 or 0 0.4 and 0 0.6 and any fractional occupancies, but total should be equal to 1. So, here I show an example. So, this molecule right. So, they have the different conformation this equal time in 8 right this equal time in 8 one is occupancy 0 0.57 and the another one has occupancy of 0 0.43. This is another example here this is a tyrosine 151 here both of them they have similar occupancy. So, in this case this 0.5 and 0.5. If the same position is occupied by all the molecules then the occupancy is 1 and depending upon the, the binding. So, it may have different orientations if they have a different conformation then the occupancy is split. So, that the total will be equal to 1. 